Shabbat Shalom. How are we all this morning? Oh, I'm live. There we go. I am now live. Blessings upon you all. We are so glad that you are here. We, uh, the sound of the shofar, the shofar sounds, what does it remind us of? It's the voice of God. So as we enter into this time of worship, we enter into the voice of God and hearing what he's going to say to us this day. Before they begin worship, please, I'd like you all to say hello to each other. A little meet and greet time. Say hi. Okay. the house of the Lord. So let us rejoice. Let us enter into worship as we glorify the name of Yeshua, as we glorify the name of the Ruach HaKodesh, as we glorify the name of Adonai, Abba, our Father. Let's join in worship. Hallelujah. The Matovu is beautiful prayer that's taken from the book of numbers and from different chapters of psalms it starts with the word of balaam a prophet who was sent by balak the king of moab to curse the tribes of israel but when balaam saw the people of israel in their tents dwelling in peace and happiness his intention of cursing them instead he blessed the people of israel with these beautiful words. Ma tovu, O Halecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Israel. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places. O Israel, oh, hallelujah. We're going to be doing now uh, the presentation of the Torah. Important to remember something. We do not worship it in the sense of that physical thing. Amen. We understand that God's word, what does it say? Throughout scripture and in the book of John, it again repeats, he was the word. So what we worship is the Word, because the Word is God, and God is the Word. And the Torah, the physical scrolls, is simply a representation of that. So as we worship, as we present the Torah, okay, some will, will, will touch, some with their Bibles, some with their... Whatever you're comfortable with. But understand what this is all about. This is about acknowledging who it is we serve. It's about acknowledging who it is who created us. It is acknowledging who it is who brought us salvation. In that, we worship and we glorify Adonai. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Verfusu oivecha, veyanusu misanecha, mi panecha. Ki mitzion tetze Torah, ki mitzion tetze Torah. Udvar Adonai Mi Yerushalayim Baruch Shenatan Torah, Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah, Torah Le'amo Yisrael Bikdushato Sabe tarot, nem sabe o 
boughs and all the mountains move into the sea. Oh Lord, you know the hearts of men and still you let them live. Oh God, who makes the mountains melt, compress us and wave. Oh God, who makes the mountains melt, compress us. Oh! 
us to go. We would go with the Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all our songs. He's worthy of all our thoughts. He's worthy of our worship. Love to know. 
those for whom we just pray, Lord. Even let us speak to our families, Lord.
praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. Follow me into eternity. I will push disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance. Disappointment. Show me one thing you can't do. Show me a mountain you can't do. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Show me, show me one thing you can do. Show me waters you can't do. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Show. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Anything. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me why she can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. It's Got to forgive me a little bit. Was the worship awesome? And and I'm going to be a little selfish here. The worship was for me. <laughs> it really was. Because I'm sitting down there going, okay, I'm supposed to do something next, aren't I? And I'm just lost in the midst of what the Holy Spirit was doing. And it's awesome. Show me one thing he cannot do. One thing. One thing. Water he cannot part. But as we're going to talk about today, when he said to Moses, there's the Red Sea. I'm going to lead you through it. And, and did God part the Red Sea? Oh, yeah. But do you know what it says in the scripture? It says Moses took his staff and he pushed it out. And guess what happened? Nothing. It said, and all night long the wind blew from the east. And then the seas parted and dried. You see, there's nothing he cannot do, no sea he cannot part, but he asks you and me to have an active part in it. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need us. But he wants us. He desires us. And he's like, you know what? I got a plan to shake this world. I got a plan to draw love from every corner. I'm going to draw all the people, and they're going to come here to me. But guess what, sons, daughters? I want you, I need you to be my hands and feet. You understand that God wants you to be part of his miracles. Yeah? I, I heard two people say, yeah. The rest of you are like, not sure? <laughs> Let me assure you, read scripture. Does God want you to be part of his miracles? Yes. Does God want you to see miracles in your life? Yes. Has God stopped doing miracles? No. no. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Um, I know we've got only one young person here today. Me. Okay. We've got two childlike people here today. Right? Come on. We're all children of the Most High God. Okay, it works. Uh, Miss Sonia, can I ask you to do me a favor? Would you come down here so we can pray a blessing over all the young people, and you're going to represent all the young people? Okay, because they're not all here today. But does that mean we don't love them? Does that mean we don't care? No. 
And so you know what we're going to do? We're going to put the till we got two. Oh, hey, dude. Okay, not 18 yet, right? Because okay, he's 18, he's a man. Okay. Okay, how old are you, dude? Up, oh, another young person. Come on down. Oh, we got more. I missed them. Thank you. Come on down. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is awesome. All right. God has been working on me in something which is, I will straight, frankly tell you, very uncomfortable. He said, John, who are you creating to replace you? Because, you know, all of us have a limited shelf life. We're going to be here for a certain number of years, and then we go on to glory. Praise God. But sometimes we get so busy doing, we forget to bless and to train and to direct. And our job is to train them up in the way. And by the way, that train them up in the way that they should go, that doesn't just mean mom and dad. That means you. Because you're aunts and uncles. You're all part of the family. And they need your prayers, your heart. And our ministry to our children, Cat over here, and the others involved, but Cat, uh, they need your prayer. Okay? So we're going to pray right now. And we're going to pray over these young ones. And we're going to pray. May the Lord bless you all. And may the Lord cause you women, you young ladies, to be like Leah like Rachel. May you be daughters and children of the Most High God. May you girls be warrior princesses in God's kingdom. May you young men be like Ephraim and Manasseh, mighty in their Lord, mighty in their God. Warrior men who understand that war is about peace, not about war. May the training that God has for you be fulfilled in you and through you. And may today be a day where you hear more about him than you knew before. To his glory and to your blessing. In Yeshua's name we all pray. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. That is so awesome to have you guys here. Because you're the future. You're the future. You know? I'm getting old. I really am. Older than I realize, you know. Let's have the... Uh, with the ushers, you're ready. We're going to do the offering. We're going to do the offering. I beg your pardon? Mishma, okay. Shema. Ah, the Shema. Very good. Okay. So let's stand again. It's We're going to stand again. It's known as the Declaration of Faith, a Pledge of Allegiance to One God and an Affirmation of Judaism. We sing it every Shabbat, at least every day. Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Vayed Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his kingdom, his glorious kingdom, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, take one last time, because some people came in. Say hello to everybody. People that snuck in, come on, say hi. How you doing? Nice to meet you all. Do that hello stuff. Bless you guys. Bless you guys. All right. Thank you very much. Awesome. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Gather together with the family. Years ago, my wife and I were in a very, very tight financial situation. This is the offering time, for case you don't. I'll give you a little, little prep. Give you a little prep ahead of time. Uh, we were in a really tight financial situation. We were broke. Flat broke. 
so flat broke, our house was in foreclosure, six months. And for all of you who are real estate people know that means sale pretty soon. We had nothing. The $5 in my pocket was a matter of do I put money into gasoline or do I buy milk for my children? Now, we were blessed. We were never going to starve to death. We had family and friends, but it was really tight. It was really tight. Someone called up and said, hey, Kenny Gossmeyer's son, Joshy, is, is in the hospital. Kawasaki's disease, rare disease. And, and we're, gonna all, we're all going to take care of him. So we called a group. We called the watchmen together. One family went and took care of the other children. One family went and actually did some housework. One family you know, prepared meals. Well, we did a meal thing for them. And we prepared the meal. We took it, dropped it off there. And on the way home, Margie looks at me. My bride, Margie, by the way, if you don't know, right down here, my beautiful bride. 42 years. So if you ever doubted prayer... She's put up with me for 42 years. That, so that alone proves God is, you know. So we're driving home, and I notice she's a little, you know, sad a little bit. And I'm like, what? She goes, well, I just gave our dinner away. We didn't really have enough to put the meal together, and so we put our meal together and dropped it off. We prayed about it, of course. I mean, we didn't, you know, just run it. But. And my beautiful blonde daughter says to me, my oldest one, says to me and says to us, Mom, Dad, just pray. We had trained them. You pray. That's what you do before you make any decision, before we decided about the meal. Just pray. So we did that. We prayed. When we pulled into the driveway on our front porch, there were five bags of groceries. Now, we got to guess who might have, they might have come from, but we really didn't know. We, really, we still really don't know to this day. But I know who they came from. They came from the God, our provider. Jehovah Jireh dropped off groceries. Now, he used a person to drop the groceries off, but that's where they came from. So I want you to do something which may not be comfortable. If you're not comfortable, I'm okay with this. I would like you, if you have a need, personal, physical, health, financial, emotional, I don't care, would you just raise your hand? If you've got any need, just raise your hand. Okay? Man, some of you are lying, but that's okay. That's okay. Because, <laughs> you know... <laughs> <'cause>, you know <laughs> Yeah, and, and us guys are the worst because us guys don't like to admit we have problems. We're like, oh, no, I'm fine. Okay. Here's the deal. Those hands were raised up. Father God, we come before you right now. Lord, we are taking the offering now, Lord God, for this, the family we come to. But Lord, you see the need in here. And Lord, this is the one place that you tell us to test you, to trust you, to go beyond. And you say, Give to the house. This is the house we've chosen to come to, Father. Lord, we bless all the other houses that know Yeshua. We bless all the other houses that speak your word this day and tomorrow. But Father, this is the house we've chosen. So Lord, I ask you to take what we bring, the offering that we bring, the tithes, the offerings that we bring now, and to bless them, Lord God. Lord, our meager dollars, our meager pay, you don't even need them, but Lord, you're doing it for us to show us you can be trusted and that you want to meet every need for every hand that was raised out here. And Lord, for those who didn't raise their hands, the needs of their heart, you're there for those too. So Father, now we ask that this offering, this tithe would be blessed by your name, that you would use it to your glory and to your honor, that you would use it to further the name of Yeshua upon this community, this city, this state, this nation, this world. We pray this, Lord God, that your name would be glorified and that your children would be blessed in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen, thank you. We have... Uh, couple things we're going to be doing today. We have a couple speakers, and as soon as Robert's done doing his job of doing the ushering, he's going to come back and talk about salt and light. Uh, we, also, we also want to make sure that you are fully aware that Rabbi, I, and you're all looking, John, you're not Rabbi. No, I'm not Rabbi. Okay. And or you can always tell, okay, Rabbi is younger, better educated, better looking. Okay. Here I am. Rabbi has been at MJAA all week, the Messiah Conference. Uh, as Barbara said, and those who have, anybody, anybody watch, be able to watch a couple of the uh, things? I see a couple hands out there. Awesome stuff. 
some amazing stuff happening. Uh, Barbara said her house is kind of filled with the Holy Spirit all week long, and she's been watching, you know, and God's been bringing in the word spoken, you know, by the various pastors and rabbis that are there. It's been a great, the worship has been great, okay? Uh, the dancing, all been fantastic. All been fantastic. So we want to, right now, we're going to take a moment just to pray for them as they're traveling back home, uh, as they are preparing for next week and all the other things that God has planned for them. Uh, Rabbi was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal some of his thunder, okay? He was reelected again as president of the MJAA, okay? Now, okay. now next week when he announced, what's that? Unanimously. Unanimously. Come on, come on. So, so... Okay, so, Rabbi, don't watch this. So, so next week, when he announces it, right, you go, oh, we're surprised to be okay, because, you know, I've, I kind of stole his thunder here a little bit, okay? Sorry about that. Sorry about that, Rabbi. Sorry. Uh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And God, because like, what did we, pre- remember we all gathered last week and prayed here? And one of the things that we were prayed, because we were asked, uh, you know, Darcy asked us, she said, will you pray specifically for the election? Because both of them, their heart was, not my will, but your will. You know, hineni, I, send me. Here I am. But if you don't want me to go, Lord, then I want to walk in what you want me to walk in. Okay? And so we prayed that here over them. So you know what, you guys? If you've never, ever understood this before, I hope you get it right now. Your prayers were answered. Your prayers were answered. Because we said, thy will be done, not our will. And if we want him elected, let him be elected. If you don't want him not elected, let him be released. That was the prayer that was put up by all of us gathered here, and God answered it. That's an awesome thing. That's an awesome thing. Uh, we also have, is, is Robert back in yet? Not yet. Okay, cool. Uh, the other thing which I also want to mention is Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights. Uh, we gather here. The men gather here in prayer. And so you're all invited, all you gentlemen. Sorry, ladies. Uh, gentlemen are all invited. Tuesday nights. Okay. Eight o'clock. We go for about an hour. And it's just a time of just open prayer. And Rabbi normally leads it, and it's a great time of prayer, so we'd invite you to be there. If you're online and you're in town, come on down. And on the second Thursday, this coming Thursday, this coming Thursday, the second Thursday of each month, the ladies will gather. And you can find that on the, our church, or you can find it, talk to, to Margie, Regina, is Regina here? I don't see. Okay. You can talk to them, and they'll tell you how to get there. Darcy, Regina, and Margie, my wife Margie, are uh, the co-facilitators for that, so they can find out all the details from them. A great opportunity for us to pray. Okay. We are going to have the salt and light people come and talking to us before, because today we're going to have a, a little deal after service, I believe at 1 o'clock, Ray Comfort is going to be speaking via video. And so what they're going to do is they're going to get in the foyer, and they're going to set up there, and then as they set up there, they'll simply watch the video, opportunity to learn a whole lot of things about what's happening today. If you don't understand Salt and Light has a ministry, Salt and Light is taking what we talked about, the scripture, and taking it to the streets. That's what it's all about. Because saying God loves you is awesome. It's awesome. And it may be enough. But saying God loves you and then showing it, then acting upon it, then providing that food, providing that bit of clothing, providing that support. Roe v. Wade was dropped, okay? Praise God. Praise God. But if we, the body of Yeshua, do not step into the gap, if we... You, me, we, the body of Yeshua, do not step into the gap. It's no better than it was before. Yeah, it's not constitutional. Who cares? Abortion is still out there. It's still legal. So we have to step in the gap. Robert, will you come down and chat with us about salt and light? And Craig's mic. You got it? Cool. Thank you, sir. Hello? All right, so uh, yeah, thank you for that introduction. You got it, sir. Salt and Light is, is the ministry that we're um, participating in today here at Tree of Life. Uh, so uh, after service and after Kiddush, come to the Salt and Light table to take action on this month's pressing issue. Um, there's, there's a, you're going to highlight a state issue. There's a bill uh, that was... Um, proposed that would lift requirements for teachers to report assaults, uh, student assaults to police. 
had actually failed to pass out of the assembly after winning support in the state senate. Uh, you know, look into the bulletin that's, um, you know, in your bulletin there's a salt and light newsletter to learn more on the details. But we're asking everyone to write a postcard in your own words to state senator Stephen Bradford urging him not to bring this dangerous bill back after it failed to advance before the deadline. And on a national issue, the other one we're going to highlight is that, the, as John pointed out, the Supreme Court of the United States overturned Roe versus Wade. Um, again, um, for more details, look in the newsletter. And the action for today, for today is to write a postcard to Chief Justice Roberts thanking the court majority for standing its ground with the abortion ruling despite the immense pressure that those uh, justices were under. Um, I'm sure you've heard in the news they were protests outside their own homes. So we need to uh, continue to pray for them. We're going to have after, um, after the Salt and Light table postcard writing, we're going to have a Salt and Light prayer and, act, prayer and action meeting today also in which we're going to um, go through a, um, a set of uh, directed prayers for our nation, for our leaders. So I want to invite everyone who wants you know, to take action our, our, to mirror what John was saying before. Prayer is what our action is. That's, that is what God has given us as believers to participate in bringing his kingdom to earth is through our prayers. So come Stay after service, after Kaddush, after writing your postcards. We're going to do a prayer and action meeting. And then after, the, um, after our prayer meeting, we're going to watch uh, a video of, did I write it here? Yeah, Ray Comfort is an evangelist, and we're gonna, he gave a lecture last, last month, a salt and light lecture on the three keys to reaching this world. So if you want to become effective in reaching to people, it's a very simple recommendations, very simple things to follow that are powerful. Um, so we're going to watch that the replay of that, uh, that, that lecture from last month. And if you stay, there will be snacks. So don't worry about your food. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. Salt and light. Gail, thank you guys so much for what you do. Um, Prayer. Wow. Vital. Amen. The, the, probably the number one weapon God gave you as an individual is prayer. But remember, prayer is not just, oh, Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, I, no, Lord do this. Lord. That's, yeah, that's part of it. And he says to do that. Ask me. See if I will not provide. Ask me. But prayer is communion with your Father. Uh, I have a group of young men that meet with me regularly, and one of the things we talk about all the time is abiding. Abide in God. What's abide mean? To just sit at his feet. J just to, well, well, yeah, John, I do my, my Bible reading twice a day. Praise God. Thank you. That's not abiding. Well, well you know, I, I, I got my list of prayer. Hallelujah. God called you to pray? Pray. That's not abiding. Abiding is setting at the feet of your Abba. Your papa, your daddy, sitting there, waiting and listening. A and you'd be amazed how many things you'll hear from the Lord when we, um, if you'll excuse the expression, shut up. When we stop talking and we just listen, it's amazing how he wants to bless you and fill you and cover you and comfort you and strengthen you and cause you to be. The amazing thing he created. Because remember, Yeshua is the lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. You, you've all read that, right? Yeah. Okay, good, good. What's that mean? What that means is before God said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, before the foundations of the earth, the lamb slain before the foundations. So before Adam and Eve ever screwed up, He's there. Before you and I ever screwed up, he's there. And I love, I love the song. It said, you know, we do these things and you let us live. Okay? Because I don't know about you guys. I've done a few things I'm not real proud of and some things that I probably should not have done. But he let me live. That's how strong his love is for us. That's how strong his love is for us. 
Gentlemen, if you don't mind, could you put the, uh, the first slide up here? O me, O my, O Nehemiah. Do not be afraid. Would you mind playing the video? Problems. We got problems. Now, this is a children's play that both my daughters were involved with years, and not this particular one, but years and years ago. And it's a great play. But it talks about Nehemiah. It talks about the wall being broken down. It talks about the problems they face. Last week, Rabbi took us through the first three or four chapters of Nehemiah. And I, I, when Rabbi asked me, he said, John, could you, could you bring the word next week? Oh, man, what an honor. It really is. I consider this a great honor to be here. Uh, and I thought, okay, Lord, I got to do, some, some, do something good. And so I started working and studying and preparing. And at the end of about Thursday, I thought, I got this. Yeah. And then God went, not that good. I went, what? Uh, John, it's not that good. I'm like, but Lord, it's your word. He goes, I know it's my word, but it's not what I want. So Thursday night, I went, Okay, <clears throat> what do you want, Lord? He said, go back to Nehemiah. Go back to Omiomaya, Nehemiah. Go back to do not be afraid. Because we got problems with a capital P. And we look around in our nation. We look around at all the things that are happening. Maybe you look around in your own family or in your own life, and we have problems. But does God have a provision for those problems? And the answer is yes. He has a, pro a, a way of handling them all. So, if you guys don't mind, slide number three. Uh, I looked around. I looked around and rose and said to the nobles and the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. And that's what God gave me. And I was like, okay, God, I got it. He, I said, what do you want me to do with it? He said, let me just take it. So I want to give you what God gave me to give to you. I believe firmly. This is, this is not me. This is what the Holy Spirit said. John, it's going to come out of here but it's for them. So please, Lord, right now, open our hearts and our minds. Father, help me not to get in the way. Help me, my words, my style, my way of doing things, my way of teaching not to get in the way, Lord God. Lord, help the things of this day, this week, this month, this year, not get in the way of all the people online and here today get in the way. The things from... One year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years. It doesn't matter, Lord God. All the stuff that we can look at and say, Lord, we got problems. And we can even point the problem, Lord. Here, here it is right here, Lord. But Lord God, you said, do not be afraid of them. And you were talking about the problems. You were talking about the difficulties. So, Father, open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to receive fully what you have purpose and you have planned. And I ask this in Yeshua's name. Could I ask the ushers to do me one more favor? Um, underneath over there, Robert, and I believe over there, thank you. Would you hand those out? 
There should be some, yes, thank you, hand those out. These are just little worksheets. Uh, I do this because I'm a teacher. <clears throat> you all know. Now, I just retired, okay? Uh, June 3rd, I officially retired from Grossmont High School. 20 years of teaching there, and I just retired. And one of the things they always teach you is, okay, you've got to have something for the kids to look at. Okay, now I'm not calling you kids. Eh, some of you are young, but you got the idea. But it's always good. And... As I said, my lovely bride up here, Margie, her and I took a class together. We took an AP art history class together, okay? Now, art history, loved it. History all the way from ancient days to modern art, a lot of great stuff in there. And so we're taking this class. Well, if you ever want to take a class and you need notes, you don't want to talk to me. You want to talk to Margie. Because we leave each class, three-hour class, we leave each class, and I'd have one page of notes, one page, with a bunch of pictures drawn on the side, because I'm a doodler, okay, it's my nature, it's my nature. Margie would leave with about seven to eight pages of notes. The guy could have done his lecture directly from her notes, because they were so perfect line, that's the way her mind works. Mine doesn't work that way. So I'm doing this for everyone whose mind works that way, or this way, you're all covered. And if you're one of the people like me who are like, you know what? I learn by listening. Eh, put the paper down. You can look at it later. If, on the other hand, you're one of those people who likes, needs to write to keep focus, write to keep focus, we are here for you. The very first fill-in says, number one, it says, we got, underlined, problems. Problems. So write, just write in the word problems there, okay? Write in the word Problems. Let's talk about some basic problems. How about um, fear of inflation? How about gas prices? How about the economy in general? How about all the concerns about all the riots and all the potential difficulty of this, that, and the other thing? Uh, the abortion issue, the LGBT issue, oh my gosh. What about the government? What about government overreach? What about our rights being taken from us? What about court decisions? COVID. Or now we got, what's the newest one? Unicorn pox, I think is the newest one. Something like that. Uh, whatever. And then we go personal. My wife, my husband. My children, my grandchildren, my parents, my health, my finances, my job, my coworkers, my fill in the blank. So behind there, I put a little blank there that says, you know, it says my problem. You, you fill in the word problem. Then there's a couple lines there. Here's what I'd like you to do. This is, this, is, this is, and for you at home, do the same thing on a piece of paper, please. <gasps> Write down your biggest problem. Now, this is just for you. you. If you want to share it with people, that's fine. But this is you and God. But I have found that for John Neal, and I think for a lot of people, what we tend to do is we tend to dance around our problem. Uh, here's my problem. Well, I can express it. Uh, Cody knows this with me when he comes to my house. You know, the guys will have to remind me, uh, John, how can we pray for you? Because, see, I'm the teacher there, you see, and I'm teaching the guys how to do it. But they will, hey, John, how do we pray for you? And, see, my mindset is not me. My mindset is, oh, I want to bless the guys. You know, what a great thing. But you know what? One of the greatest blessings I ever received was when I was going through a really tough time, just this past year, a really tough time. And that group of young men said, tonight we're just praying for you. We're just going to lift you in prayer. And I'll be honest, I've been doing prayer ministry for years and years. God's blessed me with that. I had never had people just pray for me. Now, don't get me wrong. I've had people pray for me. But it'll be that, Lord, bless you, bless you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And then they move on. These guys spent an hour and a half praying for me. I was uncomfortable. I really was. Finally, I let God take over. And I allowed it. It was really awesome. And I told them, I said, guys... I want you to know I have never been so touched by prayer. I have never so felt the presence of God in prayer as I did that evening. It was amazing. And there was a comfort and there was a peace. But one of the things that was important for me to do was to identify the problem. To say, here's the problem. Because the enemy goes, ah, that's not such a big problem. Oh, there's other problems here. We got, got nine, let, let me, if we got a list of your problems, dude, you've got so many problems, we, we, don't, we can't even take care of it. But I'm asking you to do this. Just find the number one problem. The thing that comes to your head immediately, and write it down. Because we're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with it. And I want you to see it physically. I want you to see it. Let's go to slide number four, please. There. Oh. Felt that way before? Yeah. Felt that way before? 
It's coming after you, personally. No one else really understands. There is that lion that is trying to tear you apart. And Scripture tells us about the lion that's trying to tear us apart, right? Not the lion of Judah who's trying to rebuild us, but there's another lion out there, okay? And that is your second fill-in. Because what does it say in 1 Peter 5.8? It says the adversary is what? What does it say? Anybody know? Ah, but it says an important word before roaring lion. Like. Write down the word like. You see, the adversary is like, L-I-K-E, like a roaring lion. What's that? Bad grammar. Bad grammar? I agree. Oh, you're right. Cut out the A. Okay, I'm a history teacher. I'm not an English teacher. You want an English teacher? Talk to somebody else, okay? So cut out the A. I should have had Margie read it ahead of time. Cut out the A and just put, the adversary is like... See, but the important word is he's like. He's not a roaring lion. God's word says it directly. He's like, he thinks he's a roaring lion. He's trying to be the roaring lion. He wants to act like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. Sorry, just ain't there. That's God's word. We're going to stand on God's word on everything that we do in this day. Slide number five is a buddy of mine. He's passed away now. Uh, Rich Bueller. Now, some of you may remember him. He was on the radio all the time, uh, back in the early days of K, uh, KBRT and KPRZ. And they, he was on, the, he had a show, and he was basically a pastor, a counselor, uh, and a mentor kind of a man. And he made an interesting comment one time. He said, you know what? He said, I've counseled for 25 years. I've had people come in and talk about different things in their lives, all the bad things. He said, I've, I've heard some horrible things. He says, I've had Satanists come in and tell me what they did while they were Satanists about sacrifices. I mean, we're, we're talking heavy duty. And you're like, well, yeah, but last week I lied. Okay, okay. But he had some heavy duty stuff. And he said this. He said, you know, <laughs> it's a funny thing. We, the followers of Jesus, we tend to fear that roaring lion. We, we have that lion that's in the closet. And we don't want anybody to know about it, because if they knew about it, they'd know we really weren't saved. They'd know we're really not children of God. They'd know, they'd know we're really a bad person. They'd never want to talk to us again, because we have this horrible, terrible thing inside of us, and no one else has this thing except us. That's the enemy. It's special. My pain is more special than your pain. I love a guy who said to me one time, pain is pain. Pain is pain. Anybody have any little people in your life? Children? Grandchildren? Okay, you know, one day they run out and they fall over and they, you know, they they stub their toe or they get, you know, they, their knee gets a little. You're right. And what happens? They're like, ah, I'm gonna die, you know, and they're crying and they come, oh, help me, help me, help me. The next moment, they're right out there again with the thing and they fall down again. They'd say nothing because you weren't watching. See, but if you're paying attention, they want to get that attention from you. If you're not paying attention, eh, a little blood, they go on to play. We tend to do the roaring lion inside the closet. But Rich Bueller said, I'm going to paraphrase him now. He said, you know what? When we finally open the door and you let Abba, you let God's light shine in that roaring lion, what you find is more like a kitty cat, more like Garfield. Okay, May like lasagna, but wants to be a problem. Okay, We tend to overbuild things. Now, understand the reason why we overbuild things. Because it's important to understand why we do what we do so we know not to do it anymore. We overbuild things because it gives us a presence. It gives us something to hold on to. My pain, and please do not misunderstand me at all. Pain is pain. And some of you have suffered through pain that is horrendous. That I would not want to even have to deal with. Some of you have had things happen to you by people that are supposed to be loved ones, people in authority, people who are supposed to be the good people that are supposed to help you. You've had it happen to you. And the problem is this. Our roaring lion in the closet, the fear we have, becomes our identity. You see, I've suffered more than other people have suffered. I've got more pain than other people have pain. Oh, my problem is bigger than their problem. 
And then, as I've shared with you before, we get the guy who comes to the altar. And did one time I was at the altar, he came down and said, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't find Jesus. Why? Well, I've done the unpardonable sin. Oh, really? Good. What was that? Well, I did this. He listed all the sins he did. And boy, he did a lot of sins. You know, you want to blaspheme this and blaspheme that. And, and, and this guy, we're talking murder. Right? Just horrible things this guy did. And I'm like, yeah, you, you're a pretty bad dude. There's no doubt. Yeah, time in prison. Okay. So I asked him, I said, can you do me a favor? He said, yeah. He said, I, he said, he said understand, I can't accept Jesus. Jesus can't possibly love me. Yeshua cannot be in my camp because of here's all the bad things I've done. And therefore, I'm, I'm, just not, I'm outside the pale. I said, could I borrow your cell phone? What? Could, could I borrow your cell phone? Yeah. So I took his cell phone. I went, excuse me one second. Jesus? Yeah. I found one you didn't die for. You see, what we want to do is we want to make our sins so special that somehow the love of God didn't cover it. But remember what Jesus said on the cross. All. It is finished. It is accomplished. It's done. And what did he mean? He meant every sin that had ever happened since the beginning of the earth, Adam and Eve going, did God really say? And eating an apple to the last sin that will happen before his return. He covered them. And then he went beyond covering them. He said, hey, in case you missed it, my death on the cross covered all those. My blood covered all those. In case you miss it, I'm going to tell you out loud. The last words I'm going to speak this side of the grave are, it is finished. In some of the translations, they use the word accomplished. I'm cool either way. But here's the point. That sin that you hold on to, that sin that's in the closet, that's screaming at you, that's a lion roaring at you, telling you how bad and evil and wicked you are, I'm sorry, that's a lie from the enemy. Because Jesus, Yeshua, died for that sin. Period. There is no exception. Well, what about, I'm sorry. Well, what if I, I'm sorry. Do you know Yeshua has your Lord and Savior? Okay, and for my Gentiles out there, which I'm a Gentile guy, do you know Jesus? Uh, in, case, in case you have any misunderstanding, Yeshua, Jesus, same person. Okay, it's just a different name. You know, it's like if I was in Mexico, they would call me, you know, Juan. Okay, you know, instead of John, Jesus, I'd be Jesus, exactly. So Jesus, Jesus, Yeshua, same person. Okay. God established and covered and covered. So let us go on to slide number six. How are you doing? You personally. I had you write down what it was that was your biggest thing. Uh, maybe it's an upcoming trip with a lot of money behind it, and we need more because God wants us to have more, more abundance. Maybe it's a child with some needs. Maybe it's a health issue. Uh, Margie and I are praying for a young lady right now who, who lost her baby. Okay? She was pregnant. First trimester. And lost her baby. Oh, the trauma. The pain. The difficulty. But God. And praise God. That's what she has said back to Margie. But God. You know? Is it easy? No. When I was in teaching, I would always tell my students, you can do better. And they'd say, but Mr. Yale, it's hard. And I'd say, yeah. Well, Mr. Yale, because of my economic situation, it's hard. Okay. Well, well Mr. Yale, you know, I, I come from a different country, so the language barrier, it's hard. I go, uh-huh. And I would tell them, you never heard me say it was going to be easy. What you heard me say is you can do it. You have an advantage over most of my students. You have Yeshua in your corner. So yes, it's difficult. Yes, the pain you're going through is pain. Yes, it hurts. But you've got the one who's already defeated the adversary sitting there right there with you. Covering you right there. That's an amazing thing. So how are you doing? How are you doing? Look at all the things that you, what you wrote down and the things I mentioned, the difficulties. We all know they're there. And what we want to make sure we don't do because we tend, we tend to do this, we tend to do this, as followers of Yeshua, we tend to be what I call Shabbat 
messianic followers of Yeshua. Or for those of you who do church on Sunday, Sunday go to meeting Christians. Okay? We walk in the door, we go, hallelujah, bless you, hallelujah. Good to see you, sister. Haven't seen you since last week. Bless you, sister. Oh, brother, bro, good to see you, brother. Hallelujah. How you doing? You doing good? Good. Can I pray for you? Hallelujah. I'll pray for you. Then we go home and we hang our Bible on the shelf. Oh, but, but, but John, I, I read the Bible every single day. Great, great. So once a day you take that off the shelf and you read it and you put it back on the shelf. And we become people that this is our walk with the Lord. Being here at Shabbat. Being at church on Sunday. I, we have a lot of people here, myself included, that will sometimes go to other churches on Sunday. Amen. What a blessing to be at other places where they're worshiping Jesus Christ. Oh man, I was at Awaken a couple weeks ago, Faith Chapel recently. I, these are my brothers and sisters. So whether they meet on Saturday or Sunday, do I really care? No. Do they know Yeshua? That's what I care about. Okay? But you understand, I hope you understand what I'm saying. We do this sometimes where this is what we do. We do, we do church. We do congregation. We do, but we are the church. We are the body. That's what we're supposed to be. But we got to change the mentality. We got to change, because you know what? A great saying that's put forth, this is an ancient Greek saying, so it's not you're going to find the Bible, but I think it works. It says, what you do day by day, you become. What you do day by day, you become. So day by day, are you in the word? Are you abiding? Are you praying? Are you walking the walk? Are you doing that day by day? If you're doing that by day by day, you become more and more like Yeshua. On the other hand, you show up on Shabbat or Sunday, and you do the thing, and then you go home, and I used to do this when I was in business and real estate. I would have lots of people that would say to me, hey, John, you're a Christian. I go, yeah. They go, well, um, you know, a lot of Christians I know, they go to church on Sunday, and they live like hell Monday through Saturday. Okay? They lie, they cheat, they steal. The divorce rate's just as high. The alcoholism rate's just, child abuse. Oh, it's all there. Because they were doing the church thing. They just showed up, looked all spiritual, and left. And you guys know when I brought the sword here? And by the way, I didn't bring the sword because I dropped it on the floor and they said I'd make a hole over here someplace. I, but the word, the word of God, okay, a two-edged sword cuts both ways. Do you hold it tight? Do you understand how to hold the sword? And do you use it? That's what God wants us to be about. So let me ask another question. That's actually number three, fill in. Number three, fill in. And the next slide, number seven, please. Okay, fill in. Two fill ins there. Ever wonder if he, Adonai, understands? Be honest. Don't, this, is, this is not, you know, God, God doesn't, you can't play games with God. See, so you could trick me. Hey, John, I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Bless you. You know that problem I had you pray for? You know, it's, it's God's got it all covered. And then you leave our conversation, you're like depressed. See, you can play the game. And we're all real good at playing the game. We all wear masks. You understand this, I hope. You all wear masks. I tell my high school kids, the mask you wear, let me, they go, oh, Mr. Neal, no, I'm just who I am. I go, no, 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 you're not. Yes, I am just who I am, Neil. I say, great, so tell me you talk to your grandma the way you talk to your friends. Oh. Because you talk to your grandma the way you talk to your friends, your grandma would smack you upside the head. She'd get that stick out and give you one, you know, a wooden spoon. Okay, who had a wooden spoon, Grandma? Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I think it's in the Bible somewhere, a wooden spoon. Okay, so have you ever wondered, honestly, have you ever wondered, does he understand in the midst of the rain, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the pain, God, d d did you miss this one, Lord? Lord, Lord, Lord did, do you not understand? But Lord, but this is worse than before, Lord God. But I want you to remember some things. In Genesis, way back at the beginning, Genesis, God said, Then Adonai, God, formed a person from the dust of the ground. Does God know what you're made out of? Yes. You're made out of dirt. He knew that. Okay? We're dirt bags. Okay? Well, sir. And then he breathed the ruach Amen. of breath of life, and they became a living being. So does God know you? Does God know what you're made up of? Is there anything you're going to hide from God? But you all know you can hide it from your friends. You can hide it from your spouse. You can hide it from your children, from your parents. You can hide those things. Put the right image on, put the right mask on, you can do it. But not with Adonai. Not with the God Most High. He understands. He knows. Thus saith the Lord, 
Isaiah 44, 2. Thus saith the Lord, who made you, who formed you from the womb and will help you. Did you hear that? He didn't just form you and go, boop, you're done. He says he formed you in the womb and he will help you. Why? Because I've chosen you. See, you exist because God chose for you to exist. You do understand that, I hope. You're not a, like a lot of people believe in high schools and the, and the cosmic classes they do, um, you're not an accident of evolution. Amen. There is no science to prove that. I'm sorry. There is speculation. You can say theory. Okay, all except theory. Not a problem. There's theory there. But there is no proof of evolution. I think basically based upon science... And you all notice how they love to follow science unless science doesn't work for them? Okay? Yeah. It's like, hey, follow the science. Well, what about this? That's science. Well, let's not talk about that. It's my feelings. Okay. Science is cool till it gets in the ways of people's feelings. Well, I feel like that's awesome. But again, as I tell my students all the time, your feelings, and now $6, will buy you coffee at Starbucks. Which means you don't need your feelings. You just need the 6 bucks. Because everyone has feelings. They're like belly buttons. Everyone's got one. Okay? And they change. Feelings change. Feelings change. So let's go down to slide number eight, please. Let's get practical. Let's get real world practical. Okay? Basic instructions before leaving earth. That is number four. Now, if you're like, well, you know, you know, I'm sorry, John. I learned at my church. It says believers instruction. Oh, I don't care. Write down believer's instructions or basic instructions. I like basic. I like basic. It works for me personally. Okay? Basic instructions. So we're going to look at the basic instructions. Because remember what I told you. God said, Nehemiah 4.14. So we're going to look at God's basic instructions, which I believe he gave us everything you need to know right there in that little clip about how to deal with what? Problems. Because we got problems. So how do we deal with them? We're going to go and look at the next slide, number nine. And you'll notice I underlined some things. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your home. Nehemiah 4.14. It's right there. It's everything you need. You've got Yeshua. And we'll talk about that later if you haven't got Yeshua. We'll get there for you online or for you here. We'll talk about that in a moment. But everything you need in the basic construct, what is the thing I need to do? It's right there. It's right there. So, next slide, please. We're going to use what I call the Life Combat Manual 101. Okay? And there's some basic instructions in this Life Combat Manual. Uh, and I look. It's the very beginning, first verse. I looked. Number two, do not be afraid. Number three, remember the Lord. Bang. Number four, fight. And then it lists those that we're going to fight for. Welcome to life. Did he say it was going to be easy? No. If it was going to be easier, the day you accepted Yeshua as your Lord, your Savior, your Master, and I liked Ed King, a lot of people go, oh, he's my Lord and he's my Savior. That's great. Is he your Master? Is he your king? Because he's all. He's not just savior. Someone can save you and walk away. He never walks away. Okay. You can say, Lord, Lord, Lord. And you know what? Most of you still pay taxes. <clears throat> so the government has that position of authority and power like a Lord over you and you pay taxes. You don't look to them for your support, I hope. Lord and master. Savior. King. Let's go to slide number 11. Your fill-in should be, and I looked around, and here's what I want you to add there. I looked around, but here's what I want you to add. And I took honest assessment. I took honest assessment. Because we can look around and we can fool ourselves. Hey, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, compared to so-and-so down the street, I'm not drinking, I'm not driving, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, 
dating girls that do all that kind of stuff, you know, spit and chew and drink, date girls that do. I'm not doing all that kind of stuff. I'm a pretty good guy, basically. You know, I don't beat my wife. I wouldn't because she'd beat me up. But I don't beat my wife. You know. Well, I, I always tell my young man, I say, guys, remember something. And for all the, and for my people getting married. Yes, ma'am. Going to move on? No. Uh, for the new people, and we got the new married couple here. Bless you guys. So cool. And we got people that are engaged, getting married soon. Okay, we love that kind of thing. I always tell the young men the same thing. Remember, it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter if you can overpower your wife. It really doesn't matter. You have to sleep. <laughs> and when you sleep, you're at their total mercy. <clears throat> Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. So, we're going to look at the first one here. And the first one says, well, look around, check out the walls of your temple. Your temple. You are the temple of the Most High God. Right? You are the temple. This is why we don't need a high priest anymore. Because we have a high priest. Who is our high priest? Yeshua. So we don't have to go to a pharisaical group of priests and say, okay, would you bring the offering? Would you bring the sacrifice? We, we don't have to do that. Yeshua took that role, and he didn't say you've got to go to the temple. Do I love the temple and the concept of the temple in Jerusalem? Oh, yeah. How many of you have been online or here? How many of you have been to Israel and been to Jerusalem? Okay. If you haven't gone, go. Amen. Go. Okay. Amen. Right. And I'll tell you who should take the tour. We'll talk later. Here's the deal. I loved being there. I, I got to see the Western Wall. I went up and I prayed at the Western Wall. I took my prayer thing and I stuck it in the I love it. And I believe Scripture makes it clear. One day, they, another temple will be built there. And it makes it very clear. Yeshua, he's not going to arrive in San Diego. Well, he's already here. He's not going to show up in Washington, D.C. He is going to show up in Jerusalem. That's his place. So I honor that. I think that's awesome. But here's the deal. You, by his word, you are his temple. You are his temple. That being said, look at your temple. How's your temple doing? You know, how, how's the walls of your temple doing? And I mean every aspect. I'm sorry, I'm going to get a little personal here. Okay? I mean body, soul, mind, and spirit. Are you treating your body, physical health, the way you would treat the temple of God? Because understand, your body is the temple of God. So take an honest assessment. What is it that you have going on inside of you? Take an assessment of your family. Well, you know, I don't want to talk about my family. Well, why not? Uh, fathers, husbands, you are the head of your household. Well, hey, this is 2022 America, you know, and everyone's equal and everybody's the same. I'm sorry. When did God change his word to fit the society? He did not. His word is true. He is the creator. You do not, by the way, you do not put water in your gas tank. True? And why would you not do that? Well, you'd not do that because it'd ruin your car. Why? Because the manufacturer made it with an engine, and the engine requires gasoline. And it says right there in the owner's manual. And it's actually, this is how dumb that we are. It actually says right there on your gas tank, it says a little opening there, it says, unleaded gas or gas only. So you don't put water in there because it'll ruin your engine. So what do we do? We look at the manufacturer of the car and go, the guy who manufactured the car said, I need to have oil in the car. That goes in the engine, not in the gas tank. The guy said, you got to put gasoline inside the gas tank, not water. Good. You put water in the radiator. Simple. Who should we look to for what's best for us? The creator of the vehicle. The chassis, the body. What did he say we should do? How should we take care of ourselves? Body, soul, mind, and spirit. So take a look around and take an honest assessment. Look at it realistically. What's it all about? Being a follower of Yeshua doesn't mean that you're an ostrich with your head in the sand. It doesn't mean, well, you know, God will take care of it. One of the things we have been guilty of in the body of Yeshua is waiting for a rapture. Okay? But one day, you know, the, the Lord will come, there'll be a shout, a trumpet, and we'll all come up to, hallelujah, praise God. I believe that's true. Amen. But he didn't say to his disciples, go and make waiters of all people. 
Go, go, go and have people stand in their homes, in their churches, and stare at the heavens and go, come soon, Lord Jesus. That's not what he said to do. He said, go into the world. The world. And what? Make disciples. Students. Disciples of God and of his word. That's what the good news is. And sometimes we've gotten stuck with, well, you know, I taught Sunday school for seven years. I don't have to do that anymore. I ministered for 20 years at my church. I don't have to do that anymore. Uh, I just told you guys that I retired. Okay, guess what? Retired simply means you're more tired. Retired. That's all it means, okay? I have worked more in the past month opportunities God's given me in the past month that I ever have because now I'm more free. I can do more things. The word, go check it out. And if I'm wrong, please, I want to know this. Because, I mean, you know, like I said, Rabbi's the more educated guy. I need more biblical knowledge. I'm studying, trying to be more informed. But I have yet to find the word retire in the scripture. Now, you, you may, if you do, please come see me afterwards. I want to know about it. It's not there, at least that I've found. Therefore, when I'm done teaching, God says, I got a new job for you. My daughter called me up and said, Dad, I'm praying for you. I'm retiring. It was the third, the day I retired. She's like, Dad, I'm so excited. I'm praying for you. And she said, I'm going to pray. And she said, Lord God, thank you for my dad. He's not graduating. He's not retiring. He's getting a promotion Amen. to the next job you have for him. Amen. So what's the next job God has for you? And are you doing the things you're called to do? Every one of you, and I don't care the color of this or how old this is, every one of you has a job to do. Amen. You've got a job, and you've got things you can teach people. You've got younger people around you that need to hear your voice. And like I said earlier, are you building? Craig, Earl, Robert, Cody, are you building the person, training the person to replace you? Because the training is there because God's given you a gift. Cecily. Giving you a gift. And in that gift, he says, use it to bless me. Use it to bless you. And make sure someone else gets that gift. So well, let's take the assessment. First part of your life. First thing you want to do. The manual of how you want to make sure things work good in your life. Take a look around and be honest with yourself. Next slide, please. In your fill-in, step six, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Uh, it's easy to say, hard to do. No, it's not. It's easy to fall into. It's easy to fall into being afraid. It's easy to repeat fate, afraid because what you do day by day is what you become. So if day by day you're afraid, guess what you're going to be? Afraid. If day by day you're unworthy, guess what you're going to be? Unworthy. My brother Craig, we were praying the other day, and he made a comment to me, which I loved. I made a comment about, you know, how unworthy I felt. Because, I mean, you know, you all know yourselves. Okay. We don't need any videos up here of what you've done in your entire life. But I want you to imagine right now there's a video up here of your life. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Poop on the screen. Everybody watching it. Okay. But, but then Craig reminded me, he said, did, did, did Jesus like die for all that stuff? Like, yeah. So are you worthy? Not because of you, but because of him. And therefore, if you're worthy, are you worthy of every one of his blessings? Are you worthy of the healing? Now, you see, our tendency is, well, you know, I don't deserve to be healed because of all my sin. I'm sorry, it doesn't say that in the scripture. By his stripes, you are healed. Hallelujah. Not maybe, might sort of be, not kind of. Well, what if I don't see the manifestation of it? Okay. So what? Does that change God? Maybe, maybe, and these are just some maybes, maybe you need to stop doing the sin you're doing and justifying it. Well, God already died for my sins, therefore it's okay if I do this. You know, come on. He already died for it. What the heck? I'm sorry, that's not what he said. Your fear, your pain, what you have possessed as who you are. Maybe it's time to say that really is under the blood of the Lamb. 
and not, you know, you know what we all tend to do, and, and I know I'm probably the only person who does this, but you, I, I know some of you do, really. We put it at the foot of the cross, right? Hallelujah. We get the blood of the Lamb covering it. Hallelujah. And we're all like, wow, I ask God for forgiveness, and I put it at the foot of the cross. I ask God's blood to cover it. Hallelujah. We're all excited. And about 30 seconds later, we go over the cross and go, and we pick it back up and put it right in front of us again. Well, yeah, but this, was, this one's really bad. This, this one's really evil. This, this one's really, really terrible. Well, yeah, but did he die for all sins? Yes. But, but, but this one. And again, remember what I told you. What do we tend to do? We tend to identify with our sin. Because what we do day by day, that begins our identification. And for some people, I have a dear friend of mine. Love this guy. He is awesome. I've known him for 40 years. And for 25 years of those 40 years, every single time we would talk, we would pray, we'd get together as a family, as a group, at church, whatever, he'd say, you know, my childhood. And when I, when I was, you know, 10 years old, and, and I had this happen to me, and that happened to me, and I go, okay, great. And finally one day I said, brother, you had some horrible things happen to you. He said, yeah, I did. But you see, his identity was in the horrible things. His identity was not in the Lord he served in the recreation that you have become. You are a new creation in Yeshua. Okay? Not an old creation, a new creation in Yeshua. And I said, you know what? It makes total sense for a 10-year-old child who had a threatening, physically threatening father. I'm talking shotgun in the mouth kind of threatening. It makes total sense for that child to be afraid. And for years... While that guy was still in the household, for that child to be afraid, that, that's perfectly logical. I said, but brother, you're 45 years old now. That guy's 78. That guy's dying from cancer in the hospital. He can't hurt you. And either it's covered by God or it's not. If it's not, then we better reassess everything we believe. The question always is to me, what do you believe? Oh, I, I believe Jesus is Lord. Yeshua is my king. Great. Do you believe it? That's great. But remember what I said about beliefs. See, belief does just not mean I think, I feel. It means I walk. It's established in me. That's what it's about. Because you can believe anything. You can believe, I mean, I was a kid. I believed the moon was made out of green cheese. Someone told me that one time. I was like, okay, cool, green cheese. But what do you believe, meaning what do you walk day by day? And you will know, because if you walk day by day your sin, if you walk day by day your pain, if you walk day by day your undoneness, that is what you become. But it's not easy. You never heard me say it's easy. You've got years in some of your lives of having to change what you did. What happened to you? You've got years of that happening. And now God says, but you're a new creation. You've now switched. You've now changed. But the man inside wants you to go back. Wants you to find that old pain. Because, because I, you know, I, when I had pain, I could say, I have pain, you know? And don't you guys understand my pain? Everybody go, oh, Earl, I feel so sorry for you. Let's, just get, we, let's all gather around Earl and pray right now. And so every time you get together at the church meeting, every time you get together at synagogue, every time you get together at men's prayer, okay, we're going to pray for so-and-so again. I think God's the God of the breakthrough. And then we sing that? Yes. The God of the breakthrough. What's he want to break through? That stuff that you're holding on to. I've told you this before, but it's, I think it's important to remind you. God said to me one day, I got really good things for you. I had a dream. And in my dream, there's a big giant doorway, you know, and I'm walking to the doorway, and I, I get stuck in the doorway. I'm like, and I could see the stuff God wants on the other side. It's like, look at all those cool things. And God's going, step on through. I'm like, okay, God. I can't get through the door. And God says, let it go. I'm not talking the frozen song, okay? Just yeah, <laughs> let it go. And I looked over my shoulder, and you know what I'm wearing? I'm wearing the hugest backpack you've ever seen in your entire life. It's strapped to my body. It's like 
three times bigger than I am, and I'm trying to walk through the door that is God's opening, God's new creation, God's new way of doing things with this backpack. And God said, let it go. And you know, my first reaction, you, you, you would think, through, you know, being a godly man, you'd think my first reaction would have been, oh, Lord, thank you. My first reaction was this, but it's my stuff. See, it's what I had in my entire life. It was my identity. And God was saying, you've got to let go of your identity to become the new thing I want you to be. And if you don't let the backpack bow, all that garbage from the past, that's the past. It's finished. It's accomplished. It's done. Let it go. And now step through the door. So, we are going to look at that wall. And please remember, remember the Jericho thing? What happened? Walls came tumbling down, right. But remember, except for one part of the wall. Rahab's part of the wall. Because you remember the promise that was made. Uh, if you don't betray us, uh, when we do, you put that little red string out the door, at the window, and, and it says in the scripture, Rahab's house was built into the wall. Therefore, when you hear the story of Jericho, and the horns blow, and the shout goes out, and the walls came tumbling down, hallelujah, it all collapsed except for one section. Rahab's section. Why? Because Rahab did not hold on to her backpack. Rahab did not stick with her past. Rahab said, I accept and believe the God that you serve. That God will be my God. And that's why her house stood. That's why her family was saved. That's why you have opportunity to go exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you can ask or imagine in our Lord, in our Savior. Next slide, please. <clears throat> How many times? <clears throat> Do not be afraid. How many times does Adonai say? Now, I will grant you this is the uh, English Standard Version. Okay, I've checked other versions. There's different numbers. I like this because it makes, I, I just kind of like it. Feel, I feel good with this. 365 times in the English Standard Version, God says, do not be afraid, do not fear. 365 times. Isn't it fun that God, before there was even a Gregorian calendar, established 365 times? Okay. You know, the Gregorian calendar is after the Roman Empire. Okay. And so this, all this is written, all these things were written before they even established the calendar. But God knew us enough to say, you know what, they're going to need to be reminded 365 days. Once a day, you need to be reminded. You need to be reminded. God, God, God says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Our God, remember, our God didn't give us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power, of love, and self-control, a strong mind. The enemy wants you to live in a spirit of fear. Understand, spirit, fear is a spirit. It's a demonic presence. Okay, Understand, he says, a spirit of fear. He didn't give us that. He's acknowledging there is a spirit of fear out there, but that doesn't come from God. That comes from the enemy. And the enemy says you need fear. You need to be afraid of your sin. You need to be afraid of the people around you. You need to be afraid of the truth. You need to be afraid of God's punishment. You need to be afraid of this, afraid of that. That is the fear. And God said, I did not give you that spirit. I gave you a spirit of power. Love. Self-control. That's what I gave you. So, remember, like Joshua, be not afraid, right? But remember Joshua? Joshua was afraid. Understand what happened. Moses is now dead. He's been anointed to be the leader of Israel. And God says, take him into the promised land. And what does he, and if you ever have any concerns, I want you to read the book of Joshua, chapter 1, over and over and over again. Because he says multiple times, Joshua, be strong, be courageous. Do not fear the, I'm going before you. Just like I treated Moses, I'm going to treat you. The same blessings are going to come forth. I've got this. Now, God is not saying that to Joshua because Joshua's like, God, I've got this. No problem. Joshua is thinking, oh my goodness, I've got to replace Moses? 
Oh, my goodness. We're going to the promised land. There are, there are, there are giants there. There are all these things there. Now, he is not outwardly afraid because he knows God is his power. He's the one of the two, him and Caleb, who said, hey, yeah, there are giants in the land, but if God says take it, take it. So that hasn't changed. But there's got to be a little trepidation. There's got to be a little bit of concern. There's got to be a little bit, oh, okay, Lord, I, 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 know, I know you said, but, but, but Lord, you know, I got all these whining, complaining people with me, you know? You know, like some of you have in your family, okay? So Joshua was able to do it, but remember what God said to him. Be courageous, be strong, because he felt the fear too. Look throughout the scripture. What does Gideon do? <gasps> okay, God, can I do another fleece? Because I'm not really sure you really said what you said. You said. Okay. Uh, how many times do we see in the scripture something like, did God really say? That's the enemy. That's the enemy. And it's repeated throughout scripture. Over and over and over again. The enemy doesn't have to come up with new lies. It's really easy. He used the same one on us, and we're, we, we're gullible. We accept it over and over again. Did God really say new creation? Did God really say sons and daughters the most high? Did God really say exceedingly abundantly beyond what you can ask or imagine? Did God really say I gave you all blessings in heavenly places? D did he really say that? Yeah, he did. We have to receive it. We've got to walk in it. We've got to believe it. So, slide 14. Next step. This is the fill-in number three. Uh, excuse me, number seven. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. See, part of the thing is, so far we've been, okay, don't, don't be afraid. You know, look around. Don't be afraid. Now we're going to do the reason we're not going to be afraid and why we should look around. Because remember the Lord. Remember, God is with you. And you notice it's number three. I love that. It's the third item on the list, okay? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Trinity. That works for me very well. Number three, remember God. And remember God who is great and awesome. It's not remember God who's like, well, he shows up sometimes. Or remember God who's small and puny. No. Remember God who is great and who is awesome. There are something like 30 trillion stars in the universe out there. They all have some form of gravity. Scientists have recently realized that with all those different you know, gravitational pulls, that all those different gravitational pulls, 30 trillion stars. That's the reason the Earth spins the way it spins. If one of those stars changes, it changes the gravitational pull on all the other stars, which changes the gravitational pull on the planet Earth. God has it that much in control. And that same God says, what do you need? How can I help you? How can I bless you? Bring your cares to me. Throw them on me. I will take them. When the people and the governments and the people rage, God is in control. Amen. That song almost lost me. I, I was, I, I was going to step here and go, okay. Cat sang it team did it, we're done. Because that's it. When everything seems out of control in your life, when everything seems out of control in the world, when the government is this, and the government is that, and COVID is this, and all these things we're concerned about, God's in control. Fear not, for I am with you. I am with you. So, remember God who is great and awesome, okay? What does he do? He takes care of everything. He takes care of every detail. He takes care of every problem. After Yeshua was taken the wine, as he's on the cross, he said, it is accomplished. It is finished. So what's finished? Everything. Oh, yeah, but we're still here. Mm-hmm. Because he has a plan and a purpose for all those who do not know him. And you're the plan and the purpose for all those who do not know him. That's your purpose for being here. Well, I've got a wife and children and a job, and I, and I teach this, and I do Sunday school. That's great. Those are awesome jobs. Glad you're doing it. But here's the deal. Your purpose is to show Yeshua to those who don't know him. Make disciples of all men. That's it. That's it. That's it. It is finished. Slide 15, please. Fight. Now, some of you don't recognize this guy because you're young puppies. Okay. That's Popeye. Popeye the Sailor Man ate his spinach, okay? And he could fight all the time. I got great forearms, okay? But what, how do you fight? See, 
give me a sword, I'm cool. Give me a gun, I'm cool. I understand that. But how do I fight where God says there's a battle you fight, but you're not using your sword. You're using the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Does that mean it's not a real battle? Oh no, it's a real battle. There's an enemy of your soul that wants to destroy you, your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, and the society. Anything to steal glory from God. That's his plan, that's his purpose. So you've got to fight. Well, I'm not much of a fighter, I'm a bit of a lover. Good, fight with love. Fight with love. Because here's the deal, and I prayed it over the kids. A warrior is not about war. A warrior is about peace. The warrior does not fight. A true warrior does not fight simply because he wants to go to battle. Swing the sword, fire the gun. That's not why he's there. He's there to defend those he loves. He's there to defend his wife, his children, his family. He's there to defend his country. That's what a true warrior does. He fights for love. He fights for peace. It doesn't mean he's any less of a warrior. Some of the strongest men that I know here and in the spirit are some Navy SEALs that I know. You know, they're the guys that get the job done. But I've talked to all of them, and they all say the same thing. I don't do it to hurt people, to kill people. I do it for the man on the right, the man on the left, and the people behind me. That's what it's all about. So what do we fight for? <sighs> Number 15. Number 15. Fight for your brothers, your sisters, your sons. I added sisters. I know it's not there in the scripture. I think God's cool with it. Okay, I don't think God's upset about this. Your sons, your daughters, your wives, and hey, your wives know how much your husband needs help, and your homes. Okay, well, exactly how do I do this? Well, it's really, unfortunately, kind of simple. It's kind of simple. Slide 16 will tell us exactly what you do. God's Word tells you how to treat, how to train all those people. Husbands, love your wife the way Christ loved the church. Sorry, guys, not putting the pressure on you, but how you doing? Do you love your wife? Do you treat your wife the way Christ treats the church. Because remember, ultimately, he died for the church, for the body. Are you willing to sacrifice yourself? Well, you know, I've got to watch my football game on, on Monday. Are you willing to give that up to cover your wife? Your hobby, your hat, whatever it is. And there's nothing wrong with watching football, okay? Don't get me wrong. I love football. Soccer, I love, okay? That's not what I'm saying. Are you willing to sacrifice that which you think is so important for that one that you love? Because that's the true issue. That's what it is. Well, but, but I'm doing this big ministry thing. Awesome. That's good. God wants you to do that ministry thing. Have you neglected your wife while you're ministering? I, pay, I pray with pastors a lot. One of the first questions I ask them is, how are you treating your wife? Oh, my, me and my wife are doing really, really good. Good, good, good. How much time do you spend with your wife? Well, you know, John, I've got I can do the sermon, and then I have counseling, and then I meet with the, this group and that group, and then there's, and there's this. Yeah, and what are you doing with your wife? It's a real simple thing. You put God first. Who's number two? Your wife. Oh, oh but, but wait a minute. I, I have to teach Sunday school. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I've got to preach a word here. Oh, I'm sorry. Your wife has to be second. And then if you are blessed enough to have children, your children are number three. I, I, I do a picture of a Gatling gun. If you don't know a Gatling gun, it's, it's like a machine gun. But it's got barrels that rotate, okay? And I say, here's the thing. That front sight, the front top sight, that's God. Never changes. The second sight, that's your wife. Never changes. Third sight, that's your family, your children. Never changes. The barrels, they rotate. My job, my recreation, ministry, different things. If I'm a, if I'm a pastor or a rabbi, the time here at the pulpit, that rotates. That changes. But if you ever get the alignment out where God is not number one, your wife is number two, and your children are number three, you're in trouble. It's not going to work because God established it that way. Wives, I mean, this is, I always get in trouble with this one. Proverbs 31, wives, okay? You want to be that kind of wife. And this is the one I always get in trouble with. Wives, submit to your husbands. Ooh, but you don't understand. My wife said one time, she said she was praying, 
I don't think she minds if I share this. She says, praying, she's like, Lord, she said, yeah, I want to submit to my husband, but you know, he's not doing a really good job. He's kind of blowing it, okay? He's not really where he needs to be with you. And God said to her, submit to your husband. And then let me deal with him. Because when you're not submitting to your husband, i got to deal with you and him. If you submit to your husband, i got you covered. And now I'm going to work on him. Amen. Not easy. Fathers, do not. This is, we always get the thing that says, uh, children, obey your parents, or honor your parents. I love that. That's honest. We'll get there in a second. <gasps> Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Don't exasperate them. That doesn't mean... No, you cannot have an iPhone 13 at four years old. Doesn't mean that. But you train them up in the way they are to go. You teach them from the time they are little so that when they are older, it's normative. It's normal. When they become 15, 14, 15, 16, high school age in particular, sometimes junior high, but high school in particular, they're going to go, I'm going to rebel. I'm going to do my own thing. Okay. Have you trained them up in the way they should go? It doesn't mean they're not going to rebel. I did. Uh, you know, I, I was raised Catholic, and all of a sudden, I, at 16 years old, I'm like, eh, I'm not sure I really understand this or believe this. I mean, I believed in God. I had no doubt about that. I saw Jesus every single su Sunday up on the cross, so I, I knew he was there. That was cool, but I was like, yeah. So I did a four or five year kind of wander. I checked into Islam. I checked into Hinduism, into Buddhism. I checked into all sorts of different religions. Because I wanted to know what was the truth. Because everything I had learned, my parents had taught me, Seemed okay, but I hadn't received them as myself. It was them telling me to go to church. It was them telling me to be at Shabbat. It was not something I received my own self and said, I grabbed this. This is mine. And at the end of that journey, I was like, oh, yeah, this is mine. And now my relationship with Jesus, my relationship with Yeshua was totally different. Why? Because I was trained, and I fell back on the training, but I learned it myself. So if they're going through rebellion, don't worry. Pray for them. Okay. Speak the truth to them. My, my wife would often say to our daughters, nevertheless, they would do something. And she'd say, well, we're going to do this. And they'd say, no, Mom, I'm not going to do this. I'm, I, I'm going to rebel. I'm gonna, and she'd say, okay, nevertheless, you are going to do it. And she didn't get angry. She didn't scream and yell at them, you know. She just went, nevertheless. Easy way or the hard way. It's, it's up to you. And God does the same thing to you. He goes, easy way or hard way. Because I love you. And I'm going to take you through this. But we're going to do it the easy way or we're going to do it the hard way. Which you prefer. Which you prefer. Children, honor your mothers and fathers. Hmm, let it go good with you. Yeah. Still not sure, huh? Seek training from the best. Not sure how I do this. Okay, th these are all good things. I accept this. Yeah, Jesus said, you know, love your wife, she'll be church. Submit to your husband. Uh, Proverbs 31, okay, children obey. Okay, great, I got it. But how do I do it? A, the word already shows you. B, find someone you respect and ask them, how do you do it? Look at someone's life and go, you know what, gosh, your life and your kids and, your, and what I see in you, the fruit that I see, makes sense to me. So could you talk to me? Could you share with me? Remember what I said, we're training people up. We're training the next musicians. We're training the next preachers. We're training the next prayer people. We're training the next people to do the work that we are called to do. If you don't know how to do it, go to the best. Find the best. Ask the best. Check out. You may have to ask two or three people to finally make the connect, but you will find the right people. God will establish it for you. And always remember the example is Yeshua. Everything he did in leadership, everything he did with his disciples, everything he did is exactly how you want to do it. You mean i got to forgive them? Yeah. Seven times 70. Mm-hmm. I was watching with my granddaughter a little thing, My Tribe, this really cool video thing for kids. And the guy said this. He said, God gives you all these things to do. And then he says something really radical. <clears throat> you guys ready? <clears throat> he says, grow up. Quit drinking milk. Get into the meat. Okay? Because a child whines and cries. And it's logical. 
You shouldn't be whining and crying. Has a mature Christian. Shouldn't happen. Number 17. Stop dwelling on the past. Hear that. Stop dwelling on the past. And I mean your successes, and I mean your failures. Quit dwelling on the past. Remember the past. You learn from the past. You made a mistake. People did bad things to you. Then learn. Don't trust that person. Be careful around here. That's an obvious thing. But don't dwell there. Don't live there. That's what the enemy wants. He doesn't want you to see the door Jesus is opening before you. He doesn't want to see the promise Yeshua has for you. What he wants you to see is the past. You're bad, you're broke, you're evil, you're wicked, you're not good enough. That's what he wants you to see. And he's going to bring it back in your face. Every, and you're going to be like, I've been good for like six years. But like an alcoholic, good friend of mine, 25 years sober, praise God. But you know what he doesn't do? He doesn't go into bars. Because he knows the temptation is still, the addiction is still there. If he gets too close to the fire, it will burn him. So he's learned to stay away from certain things. Stop dwelling in the past. Don't even remember the former things. I'm doing something brand new, something unheard of. See, you've all heard of pain. You've all heard of all the problems, the world, and this and that. But see, he's doing something unheard of. Not before heard. Today. Today. Even now, it sprouts and grows and matures. Do, and here's the big thing, do you not perceive it? Fill in number nine there, please. Number nine. Forgive, forget, and perceive. That is not easy. Remember my premise all along. It's not easy. It will be reminded to you constantly. But if you do not forgive those who have hurt you, where you've had offense, you will carry that unforgiveness, and it doesn't bother them one bit. They could care less. But you will carry it, and it will slow you down, It will stop you. It will make you hesitate. It will cause you to look the other direction. When God says, look this way, you go, yeah, but that person, you've got to forgive. And forget, like I said, forget doesn't mean, forget the former things. It doesn't mean you forget everything that ever happened. No. Learn from the mistakes. Learn from the problems. Forgetting them doesn't mean, it's like the scripture we always, everybody always proposes, like, well, you know, uh, God, uh, your, your sin is as far as the east is from the west, and God forgets them. No, he doesn't. That's not what it says. It says God chooses to remember them no more. See, God never forgets. He knows everything that's ever happened. Everything's going to happen. But he chooses not to hold them against you because of the blood of Yeshua. That becomes the key. That becomes what it's all about. If you do not know Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, you're online. You're here in this room. Oh, I go, to, I, I go to Shabbat every Saturday. That's great. But do you know Yeshua? Not just do you know of him. Because even the demons know of him. But have you received him? Have you accepted him? Do you choose to walk in him? That's what it's all about. That's what belief really means. And if you have not, if you're like, ah, I'm not really sure. Hey, John, I'm like you. I'm, I'm in that stage where I'm, I'm kind of checking out this and checking out that. Great. Go with God. I pray that you will find illumination and truth in your search and your journey. But I can direct you and make it easier for you. Start with God's word. Start with God's word. And you will see. You will know. Last picture, if you guys don't mind. Forgive, forget, perceive. Do not dwell on the past. Let the past pains and the past victories go. Praise God for them. Uh, Earl and I, we did a conference a couple weeks ago, and we're hearing back from people about, wow, this was great, and that was great, and thank you, and God's doing this, and we are so excited. We're thrilled to death. But you know what? That's June 4th. And praise God for it. But what do you got next, Lord? And not, not okay, Lord, you've got to do this. But Lord... We're abiding. We're waiting. What do you have planned? Not do we have planned. Not the logical business plan 101. What do you have planned? This is a t-shirt which I own. 
and I think it's really a good one. And it says, keep moving forward. Crawling is acceptable. Ever been crawling? Okay, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, ever been crawling? Yeah, we've all been there. Falling is acceptable. Ever fallen? Come on, come on, yep. I, uh, sorry, puking. Throwing up is acceptable. It really is. You get sick, blue, you better do it. Get rid of that stuff. Crying is acceptable. Ever been crying? Ever been weeping before the Lord? Ever been laying there going, God, you do not understand. God, help me. God, what's happening? God! It's acceptable. He doesn't go, I am so tired of hearing from you. That's not God. He says, it's acceptable. Because he knows your source. It's him. Pain. This is hard in our society. Pain is acceptable. Jesus took it to the cross. All pain. And pain, one day I'll do a class with you guys about the crucifixion, about all the things. I do it in my high school class. It's history. And I do the Roman, I do the Jewish interpretations, I do all the stuff and lay it out there in front of them and say, this is what this man, historically speaking, Yeshua, what he went through. And all my kids are like, oh my goodness. And you remember the movie, The Passion of the Christ? You know the original Passion of the Christ was rated X? Not because of sex. It was rated X because they showed the graphic violence. And any of you who've seen the movie, you know how graphic it was? I want you to imagine more graphic. No, don't imagine. But that's what our Lord went through. Pain is acceptable. Living in pain is not acceptable. But pain happens and acceptable. What's not acceptable? Quitting. The last thing you down there, never quit. Never quit. Never quit. Father God, I come before you right now and I thank you. I thank you for your blessing. Lord, I pray that what you've given me will touch hearts, change minds. Lord, I pray that each one of us here and each person online will be open to receive those who need help. That we won't go, wow, that was really great, Lord, uh, I feel good, and then we leave. But we're open to receive, and we're open to give. Lord, that's your heart for us, to be a family, the way you established us to be. We ask now, Lord, your hand of blessing, your hand of healing, your hand of provision, and strength to walk the valleys and the mountains. And Lord, though the world rages and seems out of control, we know you, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Royai. You are in control. We praise you and we glorify you now in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 As we wrap up today, and I push my notes out of the way, as we wrap up today, I want you to receive the blessing. Rabbi said, I, I was really, I'll be honest, I was kind of comfortable with this. I'm like, okay, Rabbi, you do the ironic blessing. I'm not a rabbi. And he said, I give you authority. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. You. May the Lord lift his countenance to you. And may the Lord our God grant you shalom in all your life, body, soul, mind, and spirit. In the name of the Prince of Shalom. In the name of Jehovah Shalom. I pronounce a blessing upon each of you. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here today.